Hello and welcome to another episode of BNB War Stories. I'm your host, Nick Laidlaw. Today we'll be examining stories from Russian and Ukrainian soldiers who have experience with drones. This war has seen a change in warfare in the form of civilian drones being used to recon areas for artillery, drop grenades, or even be fitted with explosives to be flown directly into enemy positions. These drones can be produced in-house for as little as 450 US dollars and have the capability of destroying a tank or a bunker full of soldiers. This war has truly become even deadlier for the average infantryman, as now there is truly no place for them to hide and seek shelter. Someone somewhere on the battlefield, is always watching you. Let's get right into it with our first story. Our first story comes from a Western volunteer by the call sign of Groot. He is a drone pilot. He says, Drones are pretty wild, especially FPV ones. This is my first war. My first time hunting. My first time trying to kill the other side. My first combat flight was surprisingly easy. I mean that in the sense that the willingness and ease to try to kill something else was surprisingly easy. I found among myself and other pilots there is a weird bloodlust whenever an issue during flight happens. Sometimes your drone gets EW, or you have a technical issue. Sometimes the warheads just don't detonate. The mission set could be a bunker, a vehicle, or if you're lucky enough, guys walking in the open. Whenever we experience an issue that costs the flight, we're always angry at the missed opportunity. The failure to destroy the enemy. It's interesting how being a drone pilot easily separates you from what I feel like is usually a much harder process for other people. That being, killing the enemy. My previous qualifications being that I could fly a little bird damn well in Battlefield 3 on Xbox. The war has gotten pretty stagnant. And to be honest, we're running out of ammo hard. So I'm guessing we're going to be in this area for a while. The enemy is definitely getting smarter. They're learning, adapting, and making small but compounding gains everywhere. Even their own FPVs. We kind of can't do anything about it. They just walk to the edge of a tree line, put down a drone, and fly with goggles from there. It seems like they're slowly just adding an FPV-capable person or persons to trenches. Because there have been more and more. We've seen them doing this shit with our own recon drones. It's wild. That's from Groot. This next story comes from a Russian soldier. It was documented on my behalf by a friend in Russia. It says, Our position was being attacked by the kamikaze drones of the enemy. Myself and two others spotted the first one. It was slow, laden down with explosives. We shot it down, but it did not explode like we expected it to. No one touched it or went near it. It may still be there in the snow. I'm not sure. An hour later, two more came over. One hit branches of trees hanging overhead the positions and crashed harmlessly, and one wounded a soldier who was only supposed to be at the position for only an hour to bring boxes of food and other items. Very unlucky for him. We put him on a litter and carried him along the tree strip. While we carried him... I was extremely afraid for myself. Soldiers are not immune to fear, and I kept thinking I was going to hear a split-second explosion and be dead, or have my legs and arms severed. Three kamikaze drones in an hour at our position, and I thought if any others were around, they would certainly see us, and they would definitely try to hit us. We were moving so slowly, they could not miss. I made the decision that if one came and I could hear it, I would run. We were fortunate, very fortunate. We made it to the evacuation point after some very tiresome work and rested for a while in the part of the trees that had good cover above our heads. There's a Russian soldier in the Kharkiv area on the eastern front of Ukraine on January 5th, 2024. This next story comes from another International Legion soldier uh, on his thoughts about being a drone pilot. He says, For me, there is little difference between dropping a grenade and flying a kamikaze FPV. Like, yeah, there's a big detachment that normally comes through the camera. But I also don't forget what I'm actually doing. It's a serious business, and that business demands a serious attitude. It is not a video game. Moments are flash burned into my mind. Images from the camera, I mean. The moment right before impact, or dropping the explosive, or seeing the aftermath from the view of another drone that's observing. At the moment, none of it bothers me in the slightest. 
I don't lose sleep over it, but I will also not lie and say that the images don't play in my mind sometimes. So, to answer your question, I guess maybe someday in the future I'll feel some remorse, or even guilt, or whatever. But right now, the images of what their organization is doing to Ukrainian soldiers and civilians is too fresh in my head to feel any sympathy or empathy. International Legion of Ukraine, uh, December 2023. This next story comes from a Ukrainian soldier who has been on the receiving end of uh, several drone attacks while fighting on the Eastern Front. He says, There's a huge influx of drone use on the Russian side. I've counted eight over me at any one point, about five of which were trying to drop stuff on us. The rest were surveillance drones. That was just over my squad. It was a company movement and every section had around the same number overhead. Me and my squad shot down about four. But for every one we downed, it seemed like two more would appear. I know they've been using gas since the start of the war, but I've only just started seeing it in my area. They drop gas canisters into Ukrainian positions. Then as soon as they run out to escape it, they hit them with FPVs and grenade droppers. But mainly FPVs. I've seen a massive rise in these kind of tactics. They have many, many drones. And even when we have EW up to knock them out of the sky, They'll constantly fly them at us all day long just to try to get us in a window when the EW dies or cuts out. The drones that have been captured, they're all made in China. POWs and other sources of intel we've gathered have all told us the mass influx has come from China. You might have noticed the spike in Russians using multi-cam pattern and fast helmets as well, all supplied by China. I've literally taken the gear off of bodies and seen the tags with my own eyes. Almost everything they get from nowadays is Chinese. Kind of makes sense, really. The Ukrainian army, uh, eastern front of Ukraine, uh, December 27th, 2023. This next story comes from another International Legion soldier. He speaks about what it is like to be directly targeted by a drone. He says, On the radio, someone said a Russian drone was in the area. I was walking through a tree strip with an ammo can of 40 millimeter grenades for the launcher, which is heavy as hell. I had no cover except for tree stumps and craters, so I thought if a drone saw me moving slowly with two giant cans, he would pick me to bomb. I heard it above me a few minutes later, and I decided to lay in a shell crater next to some logs. I curled into a ball as much as I could, and I swear to God that's the most scared I've ever been. I kept thinking, don't see me, don't see me, don't see me, but it did. It hovered above me. And here's the thing. In the videos, it looks like it would be easy to avoid getting something dropped on you. It's not. The angle of the drone, you can't tell it's dropped something until it almost lands on you. I remember lying directly under it and thinking, Fuck, it's for sure seen me. I began to panic, and I thought, if I don't control myself, I will die for sure. It was so weird how many thoughts and emotions I felt in probably three to five seconds. I thought, it's not an FPV drone, or it would already have hit me, and it's been above me for about five seconds. It's probably going to drop a grenade in a second or two. And so I waited two more seconds, and I rolled as fast as I could, like a stop, drop, and roll drill they teach you when you were little. I rolled as hard as I could. I thought I heard something hit the ground next to me, but for all I know I imagined it. I just kept rolling. And a few seconds after that, something exploded far too close for comfort but I was okay. The drone disappeared for whatever reason. Low battery, no more ammo, whatever. But it left, and I was alive. It was probably pure luck and chance that I rolled at the right time. That's war, though. You can do everything right and still die. Luck is the best ammunition you have, and not everyone has a lot of it. It was the International Legion of Ukraine, uh, Eastern Front, November of 2023. This last story comes from a female medic of the Ukrainian army. Her name is Nadia. She speaks about Russian FPV drones targeting wounded soldiers and ambulances. She says, This is the worst picture in my phone. In the evening, I found out about a seriously injured soldier who could not be carried out. The guy was lying for a long time, waiting for help, and an enemy drone was hanging in the sky above him and waiting for the evacuation team. But the company commander chose a moment, and risking his own life, went to rescue him. And they did it. 
We took the wounded man to the nearest shelter. I went there late at night, hoping I could still help. Several hours of struggle, five or six attempts to connect the dropper, I find a vein. We start to infuse solutions. His blood pressure rises, a few more injections, and we exhale. <sighs> He's stable. The guys rush to the evacuation point. We load him in the ambulance, and I say, That's it, boy. Hold on. It's all over. The doctors are waiting for you. Just a little bit and everything will be fine. They leave. I sit down. And at that very moment, my friend took this photo. And a moment later, we heard a massive explosion. And our evacuation team was out of touch. Forever. The Russians were waiting for them. Everyone was killed. When I went into the army, many people asked me, Are you going to take revenge for your husband? Do you want blood? And I always answered, I'm not going to hurt anyone. I'm going to save. So that no one else is left, like my husband, without medical care on the battlefield. And when asked whether I would provide medical care to prisoners, I always answered that yes, it was my duty. But now, after this event, I no longer want to save. I want to kill, and I will not give any help to any captive. It was Nadia of the 228th Battalion of the 127th Separate Mechanized Brigade in the uh, Zaporizhia frontline area. I have literally probably 100 stories like this. Um, expect many more videos of just four or five random stories kind of thrown together uh, of a random topic coming in the future. Um, uploading videos has become much more uh, streamlined and easy for me. However, I will say that YouTube does not like my content at all. Um, the last video I uploaded, I had to re-edit probably 15 or 20 different times because they kept age restricting the content or having no ads. Um, I've just decided that I will accept the limited or no ads, um, but I can't fight the age restrictions. So please help the channel grow, like, share, comment, help the algorithm out. I would really love to do this full time and document as many stories as I can. If you or anyone else you know has a story from any side of any war, please reach out, send me a message. I'd love to get your story on paper and record it for history. As always, every soldier has a story and every story deserves to be told. Thanks for watching.